Good morning, church. Why don't y'all stand with us as we sing this first song this morning? Who breaks the whole? This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. great day to worship our creator with you worshiping here in our church and you at home we are so glad that you are here with us this morning i give a special welcome to uh, it is scout sunday and a special welcome to pack 109 in troop or i'm sorry 909 in troop 909 we are so happy that you are here worshiping with you and your family here with us today just a couple of announcements if you're here worshiping with us to go ahead and make sure to keep that mask on and in 
do every social distance as possible so that we can keep everyone safe. No matter where you're worshiping, we, we invite you to go onto our website at fccmckinney.org and click the check-in option just so we make sure that we know that you are worshiping here with us. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious God, help us to fill your presence this morning. Help us to hear your word through song, to hear your word through scripture, and to hear your word through others. Help us to feel your presence so that we might go out into this world representing you, being your hands and feet. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
next one's a fun one. This album might want to keep standing because it's pretty upbeat. Um, so let's do this. Glad to have you here, band. It's lovely as always. Good morning, everybody. I am glad that we're worshiping here together in person. And for those of you who are worshiping with us online, we're glad to kind of be made up in whatever church community looks like right now. Uh, if you're watching the feed online, you're going to see a note, uh, a comment there from my mother. What up, Marge? Um, that I was a Cub Scout. Uh, so, Scouts, I'm sorry for any damage I have done to your public reputation as a result of my association with the organization, but I spent some lovely evenings in the basement of First Lutheran Church in Keokuk, Iowa, as a kid, uh, getting my scout on. So, we're glad that you're here with us today. Uh, we are, this morning, going to read from Psalm 103, and we're going to get a word about, hey, pay attention, God is around, okay? So, this is kind of a, a note to self so to speak, from the psalm writer. And it gets a little repetitive, and that repetition is on purpose. So we're going to read Psalm 103, the first couple of verses, and it goes like this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. You 
Any snow skiers in the room? Anybody, anybody ever careened their body down a mountain? Good. Prayed for their knees as you did so. Uh, so as we taught, our, I'm married into a ski family. So my wife had to learn to water ski. I grew up on the Mississippi River, and I had to learn to snow ski. And uh, no one told me that it's a lot easier to learn to water ski than it is to learn to snow ski. And if you fall down when you're water skiing, you just get wet. You know, you're not like floundering in the snow hoping you didn't like injure yourself. But I learned to ski, and, and it is just a central part of my life. And so we taught our kids to ski. And teaching your kids to ski is something that you do if you really don't like yourself. And so uh, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, but if you pare it down and you stick to the fundamentals, you're going to find that there's not that much involved in snow skiing. There's kind of like one big umbrella statement, which is this. Skiing is in front of you. That's like if the number one thing you need to know is that skiing is in front of you. And then underneath that, there's a couple of sort of fundamental things. So skiing is in front of you, and then there's some tactics. You want your knees forward. Um, and then you want what I call, I've never trademarked this, I've never heard anybody else use the term, but I call it zombie arms. Okay? So like if you're a zombie looking for brains, right? You're in the thriller video with Michael Jackson. You, you know, the arms are out. Zombie arms, knees forward. Okay, and then you want to remember this, your opposite big toe, that's all you need to know about turning, your opposite big toe, you want to go left, push down your big toe on your right foot, and you'll just kind of go that way, want to go right, push down the opposite big toe, the left one, and just kind of, I mean, I'm oversimplifying, but these are the fundamentals, skiing is in front of you, okay, and if you start looking around at like, oh, is that a bald eagle, you are on the ground, like, if you're trying to look and see what that guy's doing over there with his equipment, you are on the ground. If you lean back because you start to freak out, you are on the ground. Skiing is in front of you. Zombie arms, knees forward, opposite toe. That's all you really got to know. Because even when you try to get fancy pants with, like, moguls or, or going down black diamonds, getting steep and deep and trying to show off how cool you are, you're not going to be that cool if you don't use those fundamental rules that skiing's in front of you. Maybe you don't have to use the zombie arms anymore if you're not five. But you've got to keep that body forward, knees bent. You've got to pay attention to what your feet are doing. It's not that complex. It's just a matter of remembering to do the thing. To remember that it's, it's in front of you. Uh, this morning's passage is a reminder about attending to the presence of God. Like paying attention to the fact that God is near. Paying attention to the fact that God is a God of forgiveness, of mercy, of steadfast love. And the reminder that it's like right in front of you. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is in me, bless his holy name. And then we get all this explanation about really the wonder of the presence of God. But it can sound like a lot. I think, when we start talking about attending to the presence of God. It sounds very, like, fancy and formal, doesn't it? Spiritual practices, right? Like, we've got to light the candle and, like, hit the gong and have just the right potions and clear an hour from your calendar and, um, and not have a nasty thought about somebody else in traffic all day. Like, um, and that's just not at all what it is. We trick ourselves. We overcomplicate it. Right? We forget sort of just the fundamentals of the fact that God is just like present right here in front of us. And we trick ourselves then into thinking that we've got to like do the right stuff and go after all of these like fancy pants things that if we don't get just right, we've probably missed the point. And maybe we need to remind ourselves of the sort of right in front of us-ness of God. I asked for um, input on Facebook this week about where it is that y'all here at church, like just in your day-to-day, -day, what's your routine ways of connecting with the presence of God? When does it click for you? Here's what we heard. Uh, being out in the pasture, out for bike rides, neighborhood walks, time with Scripture. Uh, somebody told me counting their blessings, and then I started singing that song. Does anybody know the song about count your blessings? Can't name your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. You're going to make me sing all by myself. No, Connie knows it. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has 
done. Hey, you did it, all right? Okay, I'm not, you don't have to sing the song to count your blessings. It's just one way to do it. All right, talking with friends... Right? Sometimes, like right now, that's a really key thing when we find ourselves seeing less and less of the people that mean the most to us who are outside of our family unit. All right? And so those conversations, those Zoom meetings, those text messages, there is something of God that we connect with when we connect with people that matter to us. Heard a lot about being outside, taking hikes, being out in the woods, out in nature. When you ask yourself that question, you know, when does it click with God? You know, when does it feel like, ooh, it's there? Like, I've, I feel like the presence of God, like, I'm, I'm tapped into it. Take note of that. Take stock, take stock of that. And then um, here's, your, here's your rules for spiritual practice. Do that thing. Whatever that thing is, do it. Don't excuse it. Don't say, oh, it's not fancy enough or, oh, it's not really. I mean, I just, you know, I like to walk the dog or what. No. Don't apologize for it. If that's the thing that you do that gives you connection with God, do it. Do it. And in so doing, you sort of echo the words of the psalm writer this morning as you cry out to God, even if it's a nonverbal cry, as you're enjoying that really great book, as you're sitting on the back porch with that cup of coffee in a moment of quiet, as you're laughing with somebody who is just as close to you as family, even if they're not actually family. Do that thing. And in doing that thing... Just sort of going back to very basic things that just register with your spirit and your heart. You're crying out to God. You're, bless the Lord, oh my soul. We've got to free ourselves to uncomplicate what it looks like to commune with God. Sort of a recollection that God is right here. No big thing we got to do to make it right. It's just right here with us. It's in front of us. In the most fundamental aspects of life. I'd refer us back to the ministry of Jesus for a little bit here. Um, If we look in the Gospel of Matthew, in the the fifth chapter, it's where we get started with the Sermon on the Mount. And just in the very beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, in the very beginning of the fifth chapter of Matthew, we get from Jesus these like just very almost boring, regular life ways that we're going to register with God. He starts in the Beatitudes and just talking about very normal human experiences. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn the meek. Blessed are the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. These are just like day in and day out real life human experiences. And that's what Jesus says is where we'll find blessing. He goes on to talk about just like really boring things like salt. Really boring things like light. He goes on to talk about praying, right, and uh, how it is that we connect with God in prayer. Don't heap up empty phrases. Like, you don't have to have it all right. It doesn't have to rhyme, right? It doesn't have to be a haiku. What is that, five, seven, five, seven? I don't even know. How, I, what? Seven? Seven, whatever. Yeah, it, yeah. All I know is a haiku doesn't rhyme, and so it's not my kind of poetry. But it doesn't have to be any of that. Don't heap up empty phrases, Jesus gives us in this instruction. He's talking about these very normal human things where we connect with God, where it doesn't have to be perfect, where it's, where it's not some like Om oh, Zen thing. God, in the person of Jesus, comes to show up where we are, as we are, to reveal God's presence to us. On the eve of the unjust death of Jesus his like literal absorbing of sins of the world, he's, he's laying out to the disciples what's going to happen. He's giving them the explanation of his impending death. Things are going to change. He's talking about uh, the significance of his life with them and the life that will carry on, about the forgiveness of sin. And he wants them to remember And what does he give them to remember? Eat dinner, Jesus says. Eat dinner. The thing you're going to do every day. Your belly is going to grumble if you wait too long to do it. Eat dinner. Use that basic human day-to-day function as a thing to recall the merciful love of God 
Use that day-to-day basic human function that's not too fancy. You're going to do it no matter what. It could be steak. It could be peanuts. It doesn't matter. Use that to tell yourself again and to cry out again to the presence of God for God's mercy, God's steadfast love, the forgiveness of sin, and, and the comfort of our hearts. It's right in front of you. Jesus uses salt and light, bread and cup. In effect, saying, dude, pare it down. Bless the Lord. That's what the writer tells us this morning. Crying out with all that's in him. And giving us an invitation to do the same thing. And it's just, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to have the most brand new devotion that just came out. You don't have to know all the fancy theological language. You have to listen for that thing that stirs in you. That that thing that feels as though God is near. And the nearness of God, we find out in Jesus, is as near as our own being. Right? In in telling us that we are the light of the world, and telling us that we are the salt of the earth, Jesus is saying, inside of you already is the nearness and presence of God. And so when we hear these words from the psalmist, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Like we're crying out. We're giving ourselves over to the presence of God. The joy is that that presence is not that far away. The very being of Jesus is the reminder that God is near. When he's born, they call him Emmanuel, God with us. And so we've got to recall what it feels like to go back to very just fundamental things. Like eating dinner. Praying with just whatever comes out. Knees forward. Zombie arms. Right? It is in front of you. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Praise God's holy name with all that is in me. Praise the Lord who is right here. Amen. Last Wednesday, and they'll, they'll tell you if it's true or not, I tried, I tried to trick the youth. I don't know if they'll, if they'll agree that I was very good at tricking them. I said, do you want to talk about Psalm 103 for our scripture, or do you want to talk about the song that they're about to play, 10,000 Reasons? And uh, they said, let's talk about the song, that 10,000 Reasons. And then I tricked them and said, it's the same the same song. I thought I was so tricky. They'll admit it wasn't that tricky. What we talked about is that Psalm 103 is really great at being a personal devotion with God, and it's also really great to worship together with. And so if you're sitting here saying, I would like to extend my personal worship with God into a community, we are here to be that community. And our invitation extends to anyone and everyone that you can worship with us regularly and be a part of this community. And and if you're a part of this community, your invitation matters to extend that uh, to anyone and everyone you know. We invite you to reflect on your relationship with Christ. You can contact one of the pastors or the church office if you'd like to become a member of First Christian Church of McKinney. Let us be in our worship together as we sing the words of Psalm 103.
Church, as we prepare to share in communion, uh, we remind ourselves of these rudimentary elements of life, these most basic functions to eat and to drink, to know that in the nearness of the sustenance of our bodies is the sustenance of our soul. This bread and this cup. In the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, we celebrate an open table. And so this invitation is for all who follow in the way of Jesus to receive these elements of communion. This is not our table, but God's. And so we welcome all to receive these gifts of the bread and cup. Let's pray. Loving and eternal God, we are blessed to come to your table today. We come together in worship because our need to give praise to you as a community is important in our lives. As disciples of Christ, we celebrate this table every time we gather. The incredible sacrifice that it represents is the center of our worship. We take the bread and the cup, remembering Christ's shed blood and broken body given for the forgiveness of our sins. May the renewal we gain from worshiping together intensify our desire for daily celebrating your presence in our lives. We need your guidance, your encouragement, and your love at the forefront of our every day. Show us how to live in awareness of our constant communion with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gathered with his disciples in an upper room toward the end of his life, Jesus took bread and blessed it and gave thanks for it and broke it and passed it among those gathered. As his body broken, and he did the same with the cup before them, as his blood shed, these tangible reminders of our eternal covenant with God. And so receive these gifts, the bread and the cup, as tastes of the mercy and compassion, the forgiveness of sin that we meet in Jesus that is for all.
that is built on the love and the commitment to each other, especially through your gifts and through all the things that you can give to this community of faith and give to God. And we thank you for all of the ways in which you continue to give faithfully and give uh, with your whole heart, with all, all different means and ways. We invite you to utilize the offering plates that are outside those doors, or you can give online at our website, fccmckinney.org. There on our website, you can also submit a prayer request. We are a community of faith that like to pray for each other. We have a prayer group. We have elders. We have pastors that are here to pray with you and for you, however you may need it. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy Tribune God, you are everlasting and you are our Lord. You are merciful and gracious. You are slow to anger. You are abounding in steadfast love. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You forgive all of our mistakes. And you have the power to heal our sickness. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You redeem our lives from the pit and you crown us with steadfast love and mercy. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. You satisfy us with good and you renew our youth like eagles. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. We come before you with thanksgiving we come before you praying as a community of faith, praying for our world, and praying for those who are continuing to fight illness and sickness, and those who are continuing to make sacrifice to take care of them. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. 
we come to you this morning yearning for your presence and your work in our world so that you may touch our anxieties and heal our brokenness. We come to you together, spread among many places and spaces, praying to you, our God, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, uniting our voice as one. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, in our shared life as church outside of Sunday morning, we want to let you know about what is going on here. Uh, so please take note of our uh, February newsletter that just hit the internet here not too long ago. It's on our website. You can find it on Facebook, and hopefully it got emailed to you. If you don't get emails from the church and you want to get it, you can head to the website and uh, enter your email there so that uh, we can be in correspondence with you. You can know what's going on here. I uh, want to let you know that if you are here with us in person today, if in the next seven days you start to uh, experience any symptoms or diagnosis or COVID-19, please let us know here at the church so that we can and handle that information properly to uh, do our contact tracing. In just a couple of weeks, we're just a little over two weeks away from the beginning of the season of Lent. And so we'll honor that season uh, with Ash Wednesday. Going to be a little different this year, uh, but still, uh, still a meaningful time to gather uh, for worship. We're going to worship in the evening with a uh, conventional Ash Wednesday service at 6.30. That'll be online as well. And we're going to have drive through Ashes to go. And so you can swing through here the church uh, during the day. Uh, let's see here, between 8 and 3, Reverend Wright or myself will be out at the portico at the uh, sanctuary building to greet you, to pray with you, and to offer ashes uh, to you. Now, here's the fancy part. You get to be the asher this time. You'll be given a tiny little bag of ashes, and then you can just ash yourself in whatever place that you want. We're not going to touch you. Uh, but that will begin the season of Lent as we make our way uh, toward Holy Week and prepare ourselves for all of those events during the season of Lent. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is in me. We cry out to God, hopefully not in ways that feel distant and fancy and have to be just so, but know that God is as near as the next meal that you eat, the next light that shines, the next like flavor of salt in the broken bread and the cup that we share. God is near in the most fundamental aspects of our lives and we celebrate that nearness in Jesus the Christ who is the son of the living God who is Emmanuel right here with us. Know that if you're crying out to God you don't have to cry that loud because God's not that far off. Go in peace.
Say amen. 